All right, NASCAR fans, here you go. Cars hit the track Wednesday for single car qualifying. That will lock in two cars into the Daytona 500. That will lock in the front row, first and second qualifiers. Then everyone, including the front row, will race again in the duels. That will lock in the starting lineup, duel one inside row, duel two outside row. And then there's this very complicated matter, which we don't have most weeks, to set the starting lineup as far as in totality. There are 36 charter cars, they're in, they're not going home, but there are open cars. There are extra cars trying to make the race. Last I saw, there were five. Professor, is that still the number? Um, I believe we'll have 42 entries. So six open cars, uh, do you have them, or do you have a best guess at who they're going to be? Um, I have a pretty good guess. We have, we think we'll have Kaz Grala in the 36, uh, David Reagan in the 60, which is a, a Roush car. The 62 of Beard Motorsports. Um, BJ McLeod, who sold his charter, he'll, he'll be trying to make the 500 on his own. Then Jimmy Johnson in another Who? legacy car. Who? Seven time. Okay. And then I think maybe Greg Biffle in the 44, maybe? So here's how it works. Of those six cars, I'm not going to get way into it, but this is the easiest way to look at it. Two are going to be locked in on speed. The two fastest of those six. That's all I'm talking about now. I don't care about the rest of the field. The two fastest of those six are guaranteed. And then, after that, it's easiest to say the highest two finishing in the duels, but it gets a little complicated by um, you know, where the fastest guys are. But know this. Six teams towed their stuff to the to, you know, middle of Florida, and two teams are going to tow their stuff home after Thursday, disappointed because they're not in the great American race. Simple enough? Accurate. Let's talk qualifying for a minute. Because if you go by past history, Alex Bowman's going to be on the front row and Hendrick Motorsports is going to be somewhere up there. But if you go on recent history, the Blue Oval in Ford has dominated the last two, you know, restrictor plate style, you know, Atlanta. Right, Professor? Yes, but this is the Daytona 500. Nobody knows better than you that this is the Daytona 500. And what, who wants to be on that front row? Who wants to win the pole? Only You're one old. poll they give you a trophy for, buddy, and it's this one. Yeah. So what is it about this that Hendrick can ju – they've just – they have it, you know, perfected? Well, let's talk about it. Here's the decision they have to make, and this is fact. There are things you can do to your car for one lap that will make it run faster, both mechanically, oils in the engine, oils in the gear lube, rear height, rear wheel rate, how low you run the back of the car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are some adjustments you can make after qualifying. The cars are impounded for the duels. So um, you push all your chips in. In qualifying, you're going to run the fastest or the fastest of your car's potential. But if you don't qualify first or second, now you're going to be driving a hunk of crap on Thursday night in the duels. It's going to drive bad. It's going to drive awful. Your driver's going to hate you. So, you know, how gutsy. Now, it used to be you'd run a little practice and you'd say, oh, man, I got a shot. So you would tune it up. Now there's no practice. So this is cold out of the box. We've got Toyota with a brand new body, Ford with a new body. I mean, look, I know they have simulated it and wind tunneled it and I get all that, but new is still different and that's going to make it very complicated for them to put the car in the exact right body height pitch wise. So I think Hendrick Motorsports pushes it all in to sit on the front row. You push both cars in victory lane. You take a picture. It goes on the museum wall. Um, and not to mention, you get to strut around for two more days before you have to roll off for the 500. Yeah, they won eight of the last nine poles there. It's, if you're not picking a Hendrick car, you're wasting your money. So there you have it. So the professor says, and I agree, I know Ford dominated. If there wasn't a body change, I would be on the fence. With the body change, and I'm not saying the body change is hurting them. I'm just saying it's a little unknown. So for that reason, I have to go with the professor. I still think Hendrick Motorsports, um, and I don't know, after missing the playoffs, back from the broken leg, the most popular driver, tell me it isn't lining up, professor. Tell me this is, you know, Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift in the Super Bowl. I'm just saying. I, I won't bet against it. All right, so that's qualifying. The duels are very hard to bet on. I would avoid it, and here's why. You don't have to win the race. Um, when you come out of turn four, your driver's going to make you know, a concerted effort to win the race without damaging his car, right? And versus Sunday, damage be gone at that point. 
They're, they're, anybody who's in the final picture of the duel, you're not going to want to wreck your because that means you have a good car. Follow me, Trav, right? So now you have a good enough car to be in the picture. You don't want to tear your stuff up. If you were to bet Corey LaJoy top 10 right now, some one of those, how much would it drop after qualifying in the duels? Or is it one that, are these bets that people can sit and wait and get a little more information on? Or is it like kind of act now just in case? Um, I would say from anybody uh, 22 and up to win, plus 200, 275 for a top five, like William Byron or Bubba Wallace, I don't think it moves around a whole lot. But if Corey LaJoy goes out and runs second in the duels or third in the duels, you're, you're done. You've lost your juice. Your juice is going to get cut from six to two, six to three, and then I'm not sure his stats are as impressive when you lose them. So I, I would be an early long shot better and I would wait. I would sit on my hands. I mean, last year we saw some five or six to one odds through the racing season, but not at the plate tracks. At the restricted plate tracks, they all were longer, nearly 10 to one. So if you're going to bet Hamlin, Bush, Blaney, Kez, Larson, Logano, I don't see any of that moving enough to make a difference. I am seeing uh, one sports book as uh, qualifying match bets. Oh, let me have some. Let me run Please. you a few. So Keslowski minus one 120 versus Hamlin minus 110. Keslowski, all day. Go ahead, Professor. Tell him. Day to, and Toyota has never sat on the pole for the Daytona 500. Correct. Never. Zugats, never. Blaney minus 120 versus Logano minus 110. No thanks. Busher minus 110 versus Bell minus 120. I would take the same Ford over Toyota matchup. This one feels like now a Now listen, hit. let me put asterisks. Two new body styles. I'm taking Ford because last year they were, they were hands down the best qualifier later in the year. We believe Hendrick's going to show up, but I haven't seen anything that says Joe Gibbs is instantly going to just dominate. Have we, Professor? No, I'd agree with that. Okay. Uh, Bubba Wallace minus 110, Byron minus 120. Byron. I would take the Chevy over Toyota as well. What about this one? Hendrick, minus 140, JGR, plus 110. Highest qualifier or average? It just says uh, qualifying. So highest qualifier, I would take Hendrick. I hate to bet minus 140, but they've sat on how many? Eight of the last what? Nine. Eight of the last nine. I think I have your hammer here. Josh Berry, plus 100. Alex Bowman, minus 130. Um, I'm not hammering that. Okay. Keep going. Yep. Elaborate. There was one pole in my life I wanted to sit on more than any other. And it's the first time I put, took Dale Jr. to the Daytona 500. Rodney Childers just went winless with Kevin Harvick. SHR is rebuilding, rebranding, remodeling. You see him on social media. They are kind of put the swagger out there. If there was ever a time for a company to deliver their new man, Josh Berry, Sonny D, to the pole at the Daytona 500, this would be the time. How do you like it, Professor? You see where, you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I, I, you got a point there. So while the numbers would say it's a hammer, all I'm saying is... But, but hold on. Bowman sat on the front row in the last six races there. Yeah, I know. I predict a Ford pole sitter. I predict at least one car on the front row from 